Hello, I'm John Moore, CEO of Acorn Energy, and we call ourselves the digital energy company. And why is that? It's because we believe that making existing energy systems smarter is the best, lowest cost, highest return investment that you can do as investors in the energy sector. So we believe in, in, uh, in these, we have four companies, four terrific companies. Uh, each one of them addresses a total addressable market of about $250 million, so altogether it's about a billion dollars of total addressable market. And the, we believe the key to being successful in energy is getting more out of the existing resources, so we're layering energy intelligence on top of existing infrastructure. Uh, we have a history of very attractive exits with relatively modest amounts of capital invested, and we publicly announced that we're looking to divest one of our assets and we're looking to partner another one of our assets. So we think these are near-term inflection points for our company. Uh, we have a uh, $18.5 million of backlog as of uh, June. We have reported our third quarter numbers and corporate cash of about $6.3 million and we're debt-free at the corporate level. So what have we done? In, in, in this industry they say past results are no guarantee of future returns, but what we've done is I took over the company, we had a $10 million market capitalization back in 2006. Within 12 months, we had taken a division public called Converge that my predecessor had created. Unfortunately, we only owned about 15% of the company, and we took it public for $250 million through Citigroup, and then six months later, we did a $600 million secondary for, for Converge. That was a very successful exit for us, and it, we exited at 16 times revenue, which is very high, for, particularly for a company that was losing money. Uh, we had another company called Cologics that we bought, um, we bought it for $11 million. It was a clean coal company, and we exited that company. We bought it for $11 million, and we exited at $101 million. Our net after fees and taxes and our partnerships uh, minority interest was $61.5 million, and that was five times revenue. Again, a company that was, that was losing money. So I think what's very exciting to a lot of people today is what our next, what's our next exit going to be? We have one planned right now and we have another partnership in line. So what we are really focused on is how do we create shareholder value. So we have four companies in our portfolio. We have US Seismic is the company that most people are very, very excited about. Uh, what we do is we monitor, the, we image the subsurface in order to be able to help companies get more oil out of the subsurface for unconventional oil. Uh, we have a company in Israel called DSIT that monitors uh, underwater energy terminals, uh, energy access to terminals uh, from terroristic activity, and we think this is going to become an increasingly important part of uh, protecting energy infrastructure. We have a company called GridSense that's a smart grid company focused on distribution of energy, and uh, we think that uh, that's the biggest area that you can impact uh, productivity in the electric grid. And then lastly, we have a company called Omnimetrics that monitors standby generators. So Seismic, this is the business that U.S. Seismic is in, has always been the folk, has always been key, vital, to de-risking the oil and gas business. Up until 1980, the ratio of dry holes drilled to productive holes was seven feet of dry holes for every one foot of productive hole. Well, with the invention in 1980 of the microprocessor and 3D Seismic, basically there's very few dry holes that are drilled anymore. It's about a one-to-one -one ratio according to the Energy Information Administration. Seismic is also the force multiplier for the oil and gas industry. And as the industry went from 2D seismic before 1980, about 25% of the oil uh, was taken out of a reservoir before it was considered depleted. And then today it's around 40% with something called 3D seismic. And the industry believes this technology that we've developed called 4D seismic could get the technology, could get the industry up to 75% uh, recovery. So get more out of what you've already got. That's the key to success for the oil industry. Now, Right now, the shale industry is suffering from a big problem, and that is that about 50% of the frack stages, about 70% of the capital that's being spent on fracking, is being wasted, is not producing any hydrocarbons. And this is a survey from Welling and Company, and what they found is about 73% of the drilling completions engineers agree that the reason these frack stages are failing to produce hydrocarbons is it's failure to understand the subsurface. And and we believe that our technology, the Optifone HD, is the key to solving this, this, this problem because less than 10%, where a conventional oil field, 
about 40% of the oil is taken out. In shale, it's about 10%. So you see there's a huge opportunity for improving the productivity of shale. Um, and the success of, of unconventional reservoirs is dependent upon finding naturally occurring fractures and opening up those fractures even more in order to get the hydrocarbons out. So being able to find those existing fracture networks is incredibly important. But the current state of technology is they cannot yet image those, those, those uh, fractures. And so we've developed a technology that, uh, that we believe is going to be able to image the fractures and reduce the productivity problems the industry has. And this is particularly going to be important as there's, you know, shale is not just a single layer, layer of shale, but there's multiple layers of shale, and it's called down, 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 uh, down spacing and array fracturing means that you really need to understand what's happening each layer of, of, of fracturing. And, and less than 7% of U.S. frac jobs use microseismic monitoring because the current technology just doesn't work that well. So our, tech, our company was selected as part of a $37.5 million shootout by ConocoPhillips. Uh, they evaluated five different technologies, fiber optic and uh, conventional technologies. And uh, our technology was the outstanding winner. What, uh, what happened was that the data is being presented at the, uh, on October 28th at the Society for Exploration Geologists. And uh, just some excerpts from the study, that the paper that's been published, is the data uh, demonstrates that the Optiphone HD, that's our product, could easily detect the microseismic event but the geospace oil tool detection is difficult. That's the conventional tools. Um, the DAS sensors, these are other fiber optic sensors, are not able to detect obvious events like the Optiphone HD at this distance. And lastly, uh, the study indicated that crosswell imaging of fractures, and this is the holy grail of the unconventional oil industry, may be feasible with current industry hardware out to over 1,000 feet with frequencies up to 400 and 800 hertz, depending on the source of the receiver tool selected. So what the study showed was that the Schlumberger source was the best source, and our receiver was the best receiver. So we believe that that's going to really set us up well in our partnership discussions. So what are the customers saying? The customers, this is a quote from the uh, CEO of uh, our biggest customer, and he says, despite the fact the industry has been fracking for over 40 years, 60 years, we really don't know the geometry and the extent of the volume that we stimulate. And for unconventional reservoirs, this is critical. It's critical for optimizing well placement, well spacing, and completion design and predicting ultimate recovery. So we think our technology is the, again, a force multiplier, just like seismics always played in the oil and gas industry. And it has a huge impact on net present value of these wells. Uh, everybody agrees that fiber optics is the future of, of the oil and gas industry. Uh, Shell is quoted in this paper saying, the industry is on the verge of a step change in well and reservoir capability and that optical fibers, fiber optics, are the neurons for the future of intelligent wells. And we believe we have about a five-year lead on anybody else in this industry, and hopefully that'll make us very attractive to industry partners. Um, we're, we're widely recognized as, as leading this space. Uh, Lux Research recently uh, put out a study saying, despite the obvious impact that unconventional oil has had, there's still a relatively young technology space with plenty of opportunities for improvement. Unconventional oil and gas production needs the next generation of sensors and intelligent well design, and companies like U.S. Seismic are leading the way. Um, so uh, how our technology works is all the electronics are above the, uh, above the surface, all the fiber optics are in the subsurface, and that's important because there's a whole market for uh, plays like the Eagleford that are very high temperature fields and they can't get any seismic imaging at all of these fields. That's where we're finding a lot of interest in our technology. Um, we believe that our team and our, our track record of success is uh, you know, very important. Uh, Gary Morris, the former CFO of Halliburton and uh, CFO of another company we created called Paradigm Geophysical that was sold for a billion dollars. Um, he is the chairman of, of U.S. Seismic. Um, Mark Bashforth is the CEO of, of U.S. Seismic and he was the number two guy at a company called Roxar that, was, uh, that he and his team grew to $65 million in sales and sold it for $400 million. So he is a expert in reservoir characterization technology, and we think it's going to be very important. So we have this great scientific team. We've built the world's largest fiber optic sensor system. It's on the Virginia class of submarines. We have a huge body of intellectual property, and uh, 
So why is right now the time to partner? Why should we do this rather than uh, try to take it to market ourselves? Well, we believe that uh, you know, if, you, if, you, if you read the stories about what's happening with companies like Schlumberger and Halliburton, they are thriving right now because the amount unconventional oil requires seven times the number, the amount of services, the dollar value of services of conventional oil and gas. And what you've seen is companies like Schlumberger that have historically been exploration companies doing a lot of acquisitions to become production-based companies to take advantage of this rich spending of these oil and gas companies. Um, and the service companies are in a technology race. Uh, and, and we believe that seismic, because it's so critical to improve the productivity of production, and that is such a high return on investment activity, that uh, our technology is going to be very attractive to those companies. And we think that with having a chairman like Gary Morris, we have access into the executive suites of the largest seismic service companies. Um, the other thing is, is that a service company has access to things that are easy to take for granted, that a small company has difficulty getting, things like customers, field service, product, uh, production facilities, that, and engineering that can design tools for, you know, you can, you can develop a tool that works well at 1,000 feet, but getting it to work well at 13,000 feet is a major engineering uh, challenge. It's four Empire State Buildings deep, so uh, quite important. And we believe that we have terrific news flow coming, which like this, uh, um, the study that's going to be published on October 28th by, uh, by ConocoPhillips. Also, the Department of Energy is going to be conducting what they call the definitive fracture radius trial in the grand geothermal experiment using our tool. Uh, they believe it's the only tool in the world that can operate at high temperature and take seismic measurements. Um, and, uh, and there's four more papers coming out of ConocoPhillips talking, comparing our technology to other, other technologies. And that's all resulted in active discussions with multiple parties. So we have other businesses. Uh, we have three other businesses. DSIT Solutions is based in Tel Aviv, Israel, and uh, it played a central role in some of the conflict in Gaza, protecting uh, critical assets in Israel as well as other countries around the world. And, uh, and we think that this company is going to become increasingly interesting to uh, defense companies as they look to get out of the, or to reduce their dependence on the defense industry and get more involved in, in the security world. Omnimetrics is a company which monitors standby generators. Uh, we've had a great deal of success anticipating technology needs that are going to be required by environmental uh, changes in the, in the rules. And uh, there's about 2 million generators in the U.S. The EPA has just created a new rule called Rice NESHAP, which requires all large generators to be monitored. And the, the fines are like $23,000 a day for, for running your generator on a bad quality air day. We believe we have the tool to monitor those those generators and to uh, to be able to dispatch them into the demand response market, another industry that we created through Converge. And then our last business is called GridSense, and GridSense uh, monitors uh, distribution transformers. And distribution transformers, the number one asset owned by utilities in the world. And we believe that by monitoring these assets, these distribution transformers, you can do things like conservation voltage regulation that will be able to get more out of the existing energy infrastructure, the electric grid. That's particularly important in developing countries. It's particularly important in places like the US where the average age of a transformer is at end of life, over 40 years. And we have great partnerships with companies like Silver Spring and OnRamp Wireless and Landis and Gear. So that's the key for getting into the marketplace. And lastly, we have an outstanding board of directors. Um, Chris Clauser is our chairman. He's the former uh, president of Burger King, president of Travelocity, took that company public, uh, CEO of the Minnesota Twins, and uh, he was the senior vice president of Northwest Airlines. Uh, Rob McKee was the former head of exploration and production of Conoco, and he also ran the Iraqi oil industry for, uh, for, uh, for a period of time for the uh, coalition government. Manny Jackson, former Harlem Globetrotter, uh, bought the team out of bankruptcy for $5 million and sold it for $100 million. Uh, and he was a you know, director of Reebok and FUBU and Ashland. Uh, Andy Sassine is a former Fidelity fund manager. Uh, and lastly, Ed Woolard, he's a you know, director of Reebok and FUBU and Ashland. Uh, Andy Sassine is a former Fidelity fund manager. Uh, and lastly, Ed Woolard, he's one of our advisors, uh, and he is uh, famous for having done a lot of CEO transitions, uh, he, he transitioned uh, uh, 
he fired John Akers, brought in Luke Gerstner at IBM. He was lead director there. He was lead director at Citigroup, begged Jack Reed not to do the Traveler's acquisition, and said the only way he would stay as the lead director is if uh, they made Jamie Dimon the CEO. That obviously didn't happen. And then lastly, he uh, was the guy who recruited Steve Jobs to come back into Apple. Uh, so we have some great people. I'm a, I'm a big believer that a great board is a great tribute to the uh, business plan of the company. And uh, right now our stock is, uh, is at pretty much at an all-time low, and uh, it's a great entry point for people that are thinking about uh, getting involved. Thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions if you have any time left. My favorite color is blue. <laughs> That's a great, uh, thank you so much for coming here, and I look forward to talking to each one of you individually. Thank you.